Good morning everybody and welcome back to another weekly update video. This week we got a few interesting stories including the fact that the UK Parliament has uh, made some inquiries into Jagex regarding their monetization strategy, how many microtransactions they use as well as if it targets kids. Of course they are talking about RS3 but still interesting news and could be related to old school RuneScape. We also had a very small content update this week as a lot of the uh, rewards from the last LMS poll actually failed, so we only received one reward from the last poll, as well as there was a new announcement for actual RuneScape Leagues, which would be a seasonal game mode. Pretty excited to learn more about that. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoy the video and let's get started. Now this week we got a very small update as the LMS reward poll pretty much entirely failed, and uh, there was meant to be a lot more on here, but anyway, the only thing we ended up getting out of the entire poll was the Dark Crab Teleport Tablet. The Teleport Tablets will take you near the Dark Crab Fishing Spot and have been added to the Last Man Standing store, and it will provide quicker access to Callisto and the Vedanatus and leave you in a single way combat zone between bears and spiders in the level 33 wilderness. Everything else failed, so they're going to, I think, rework some of these older ideas and come up with something new as the LMS Reward Shop is extremely barren right now with very minimal rewards. You can now add your Mudskipper hat and flippers to the POH costume room, so you can save a little more inventory space or bank space uh, for those who actually wanted to keep the flippers. They also mentioned a bit of news that was released this week. Uh, there's the old school RuneScape Leagues, but I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, the Fremlic Exiles quest, to my shock, is actually going to be coming in next week's update. The quest is already done, and I think I already have all of the requirements for the quest, which is nice. Okay, as far as some of the bug fixes go, uh, the three remaining chat heads for the elves have been updated to match the style of the other elves, and the value of the Eternal Slayer Ring has been increased so that it protects over other items on death, as well as a few other bug fixes or quality of life changes, but that's pretty much it for the content update this week. Now one really interesting announcement this week was the introduction of the old school RuneScape leagues. Now essentially what this would be is a seasonal version of old school RuneScape. So if you think like Diablo 3 for example, the seasonal game mode would run for 3 or 4 months with a special twist on it every time and then after that 3 month period it would restart. Now I am excited about this in theory, however there's a few kind of caveats here. If the experience rates are base rate, I can't really see myself doing this as that's a lot of time investment for, I don't know, you wouldn't actually make that much progress in four months. And it'd be nice for a side game mode to not require so much time to play. A lot of players already have multiple accounts on the go that I think also playing the seasonal is kind of unrealistic. So stripped of all your items and levels, you'll complete hundreds of new challenges in ways you never thought possible, conquer a variety of tasks to gather points for relics, Break free from the meta and strategize your every move. So all throughout the game, you'll be collecting these points, which at the end or during it, you'll be able to spend on cosmetics as far as I'm aware. So some of the tasks would be like completing 500 farming contracts, completing 25 or 50 slayer tasks. Now they also mention a new relic system, which would be kind of a global boost to your account as you progress through the seasonal. Some of the options they mentioned was resources harvested are double or resources harvested are automatically banked. However, after you select them, you wouldn't be able to switch. Of course, we're not sure what the rewards are going to be yet, but they are all going to be cosmetic and transferable to the main game. They're obviously looking for feedback on this as it's in early development, so let them know what you think. And that is it for content updates this week. Now, one really big piece of news this week was that RuneScape 3 was specifically called out by the UK Parliament regarding their monetization, microtransactions and whatnot. It's pretty interesting, and while they are talking about RuneScape 3, this does obviously affect us indirectly, as if the income is axed for RS3, that could spell issues for old school RuneScape. Now they are talking about monetization strategies that new games are taking. They mentioned that uh, in previous years, the premium model was the way that most game companies operated. They would charge you up front for a game, and then later on, they wouldn't get any more money from it. However, the way things are going now is they charge you up front for a game often and then they have microtransactions throughout it. Or there is the freemium game model where you get the game for free, however you have to go through a gauntlet of microtransactions and they bottleneck the way you progress, so we have to pay money to make it quicker. Now RuneScape was actually specifically called out here as they were contacted by an adult son who built up a considerable debt reported to be in excess of 50,000 pounds. That's an insane amount of money. And they said the main reason was because 
Jagex set no limits on the amount of time or money players can spend on their game. Now, Jagex responded by saying that it generates about one third of its revenue from microtransactions and two thirds coming from an alternative subscription model. Now, well, that's mostly old school RuneScape from subscriptions and mostly microtransactions from RS3. One of the company's directors said that you can potentially spend up to £1,000 a week or £5,000 a month in RuneScape, however, only one player had hit that limit in the previous 12 months. However, it seems that the company's reason for setting this limit is more to stem from fraud prevention rather than to care and prevent people from spending more than they should. And there are a few other anecdotes here of players spending tons of money. Now, I think one of the biggest problems for RuneScape is currently it's marketed towards everyone. For a game to have gambling, microtransactions, and whatever else RuneScape has, it can't really be targeted towards kids. They'd have to raise the RuneScape to an adult rating of some sort. Now what Jagex is countering with is that the game's actually not mainly played by kids. It's mostly people in their 20s, which I think is mostly true. However, there's definitely some shady practices and the level of microtransactions in RS3 is appalling regardless of what age demographic the players are. I'm interested to see if anything changes here or if Jagex kind of worms their way out of this. Now this week another Jmod left Jagex. Mod Maz is one of the older mods around. They worked on both RS3 and Old School and so it's sad to see them go and they were not the only mod to leave this week. I think there was another one from RS3. We have lost quite a few moderators in the last couple of months or the last year. Kind of worth noting but I don't think there's anything to it yet. Now another really interesting uh, discovery this week was by Sir Pugger who made a video about the mobile botting scene. I didn't even know they existed. But apparently there are mobile bots with nearly a 0% ban rate going around RuneScape right now. I definitely thought there was a possibility for mobile bots, but I didn't think their ban rate would be like 0%. In the video, Sir Pugger interviews one of the bot makers or one of the heavy botters. They said throughout one of the bots that they were running, only two people or something got banned in the last couple of months. So the ban rate is extremely low and something that Jagex I think is probably looking into now. Because that would be posing a huge integrity issue to RuneScape. Now one other thing I'm not really going to read through this week, but there was a really good post by someone called Host Okra, who was one of the players in the hosting community, and it's a large paragraph about the, well they named it the ugly truths of World 330 hosting. I'll leave a link in the description for it, it's a really good read, and really goes into depth on what some of these hosters are like, because a lot of them were complaining that the notice board got put in the game. But apparently there's a big underground subculture to it that I didn't even know about. This week a player by the name of Exact got a 46 combat infernal cape, and apparently the previous record was 50. That's insane, I still can't do it at any combat level, so I'm very impressed man, good job. And last up here, just a look at the poll result for Last Man Standing. As I was mentioning, only one thing passed out of 15 questions or so, so yeah, they're gonna have to go ahead and do that again. Now there was about three or four of them that were pretty close to passing, but everything else really wasn't that close. And that is it for community news this week. Now, last up here, I just wanted to go over the weekly Q&A. There's quite a bit of useful information in here. Okay, first up here, what has happened to the PvP Bounty Hunter blog? Uh, they said it's been postponed for a while while the designs are worked on and discussed. How long would a league last for? They said it would vary. Uh, what works for one may not work for another, likely a few months. Uh, the first may be two months long. How many leagues would there be? No idea, it's something fresh and experimental, and if players like it, then we'll continue it. Will it have increased experience rates? It will vary on what players want and what the end game of the league is. That could be tweaked up and down on a league by league basis. Will there be PvP in the game mode? Maybe if the players want it. Can you play your main account simultaneously? No, you will not be able to do that, you'll have to create a second account. Will this replace esports and competitive gaming? No, this is completely separate and won't be replacing that. The other work that the esports head is working on is a long-term vision. Do you like the idea of having a Wilderness Barrows style minigame? They said the premise is cool and people really do like Barrows. We know that PVMers don't like being forced into the wilderness to do content. With it being in the wilderness, however, we'd have a bit more room to have a profit versus risk. There is a mobile botting concern, do you guys know of it? Since October 1st, 2018, 13,811 mobile specific bots have been banned. This week alone we banned around 1,400. Uh, you can check Modwee's Twitter too, he's open to talk about it where possible. 
is the Halloween event being worked on. Mod Flippy is finished and it's in review. It has 12 rewards this year. Some are similar and has got a real old school feel. Can we get more P mods for old school RuneScape? The player support team deal to this and if you want more P mods in a specific world or time zone then tweet mod Sween please. Anyway guys that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did don't forget to leave the video a like. I always appreciate it and I will see you next time.